everybody, back out bullying here. Welcome one and all to my humble silver pouring bench. Today we're doing a ride along pouring session and stamping session as well because we are going to be following the life cycle of a one ounce silver four and bar. So for those of you who don't know, we've done these now this is the third year, 2017 was the first year we created these bars and they've evolved year on year. We've got a brand new set of stamps to use for the 2019 uh, bars and we are well on with production. So if you've been following these on the forum already, you'll know that we are um, looking at a mid-May kind of general release date. There's been a pre-order sales period for this last sort of six weeks or so. And a huge thank you to all of you out there who have supported the bars. Proceeds from the sales of the bars go a long way to help support the forum. And of course, they help support our business here as well. We do have bars still available in general sale and pre-order. If you're interested, you can see all of the details over on the forum. There's a link down below to uh, the thread there and they're also available to purchase directly on my website. There's a link down below to that listing as well. So we are creating one ounce bars and this is what the uh, prototype looks like. This is what we've done each year in the same mold. Uh, this, God bless, this mold has seen literally thousands, I would say, of uh, pores go in and out of it and it's holding up pretty well. It's starting to get funky and discolored, but at the same time, it still works perfectly well. So really interesting uh, kind of life cycle of the mold. And this is the this is the bar in question. This is the shape that we are looking at. It's a really nice shape. It's good, it's sizable. It's got that great face for stamping. And of course, more importantly, we can get some really gorgeous looking ripples on the bars, which is all what the backyard bullion is about. Now, the way that we produce those ripples is interesting and I don't have any of the bars in, its, in, in, in this shape to show you exactly what happens but I've got this piece of silver here uh, and I get this question asked every year about why we do the bars the way we do them I pour these by eye I pour these by uh, just judgment of how much one ounce is going to be in here it causes a lot more work for myself because the amount of times that you're over or under uh, is considerable and there's always a weight allowance which I put in of kind of around 5% maximum uh, and there's going to be a leaflet this year in each of the bars to explain the process and why we do that but I thought I'd kind of sum it up here for you guys and a lot of you always ask in this uh, kind of world why don't you weigh out exactly one ounce worth of this silver casting grain put it in the graphite crucible and then pour it all into the mold job done you've got a one ounce bar you have very little wastage yes you can do that from my experience though, it's very difficult to do and get a good result because you get something like this here. Uh, this isn't one of the one ounce bars, but it is a really good example of what comes out of these graphite crucibles. And I'm sure any of you graphite silver pourers out there will be familiar with this. This is all of the kind of graphite dust which erodes and degrades out of the crucibles. And it just comes out right at the end of the pouring cycle in the last dregs of the silver. And it makes this horrible, I call it gump, and it's just horrible and uh, it distorts ripples it's hard to clean off you can get it off but you know often when you've got it off you'll lose a lot of the detail and ripples underneath it so we pour by eye we pour by judgment of eye to create a nice clean bar now this is an example of having done that uh, by complete eye and as you can see there's lovely glorious clean ripples no graphite pollution or if there is any graphite pollution you can see it's just a very minute speck there at the center of that ripple pool and that comes off incredibly easily so you, a you get a more pretty looking bar and b you cut down on that workload of having to work on every single bar afterwards uh, this one actually ended up being slightly underweight and that'll be popped back in to remelt down so that's an explanation of how we do it next is to actually show you some of the bars being poured themselves hopefully we're going to get a couple of good ones uh, you know around the right weight size it's tricky I've probably poured I'd say at least two bars for every one that comes out uh, is under or overweight it's been quite challenging this year I don't know whether that's just a change in I don't know in my muscle memory I've been pouring a lot more bigger pieces this year and it's taken me a lot longer to get into that groove of things for pouring the smaller ones um, but you know that's life you get on with it and uh, we we like doing it this way because we get a much better bar and that is what we are all about making sure that the bars that we create are the best so we're gonna pour some bars hopefully we'll get some good ones I'll show you probably some of the bad ones that come out as well the overs and the unders and then we'll head on over to the stamping bench or block I've got a big anvil and we'll stamp it up and show you how we physically stamp the bar. So enjoy this video. See you in a minute. 
so we are ready to pour. We've got the mold nice and hot here and the blowtorch is what creates the ripples. If you've not seen any of my pouring before, it keeps the silver molten just that fraction of a second longer and it, we're able then to tap the mold and get some nice ripples, which you'll see in a moment. So uh, hopefully we're gonna get a one ounce bar out of this. We'll see. If we don't, it's not the end of the world. We'll just remelt it. There's only really one way to find out and that is to pour it. So there we go, that is going to be, I think, very close, if not slightly under. I, th I think it's going to be slightly under from experience, of having poured close to probably 400 of these little bars over this last, gosh, it's been about four weeks now that I've been manufacturing these. So there is one way we can do this quite efficiently. So I weigh them when they are hot and that allows me, if they are wrong, to stick them straight back in. I can tell this is going to be under. So we put it on that mould on the scale so we don't destroy the scales and you can see there 0.94. So that is under. We're going to stick that back in and I'll be back with attempt number two. And we're back for attempt number two. Let's see if we can hit one ounce or thereabouts with this attempt. That is bigger than bar number one. Might be too big though, we shall see. So you can see like the results are nice, you get nice ripples on them, but it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of time to get all of these uh, pieces done at the right weight level. It can be quite frustrating as well because you can get days where you can do you know, 10, 15 bars in a day and it's absolutely perfect. So that's sort of over 1.1. Uh, and as well it had those little sort of pit marks on it so I wasn't too happy with that anyway so we're going to dump that straight back in and hopefully third time's a charm we'll see how that goes here we are then third time lucky let's make this one a good one there we go I think that is going to be within the range I tend to let some go through around 1.7-ish ounces. I try and keep them within that kind of 5% margin. But there's, as you've seen, like, it's not perfect. You can't get this right every time. And it's quite difficult to get right every time. And it just takes a long time if you are going to keep on melting every single one you do. So there are some that we just end up letting through slightly heavier. But 1.049, that is basically bang on the 5%. And it's got some nice ripples on it too. So that is going to get quenched and then rinse and repeat basically that is what I've been doing for this last gosh nearly four weeks I think now and uh, we'll hopefully have a few more of these in hand I'm just going to pour a few more off camera and then we'll go over to the anvil and we shall stamp them up so I'll see you over there in a minute Right, so after many, many more hours of silver pouring, we finally end up, you rinse and repeat, and you end up with 200 one ounce ish bars. Got here three full boxes already done, uh, and we've got the final box which we're working on here. Six to stamp left, which then, do your maths, 56 times 3, 168, plus then the 31 bars that we're going to stamp, and the prototype bar 200. Done. So, stamping is the next part of the process and I've done stamping videos before showing parts of uh, the whole fun shebang that is stamping silver. It's a, it's a challenge to say the least and sometimes it goes wrong and there's been many a bar in this batch that has gone wrong. Here's one of them and it doesn't look that wrong but you can see the kind of the um, the pickaxe stamp jumped a little bit and it's not quite perfect and that's what we are aiming for here. We're, we're looking for things which are Perfect, and also concentration is really important as well because if you don't concentrate, sometimes this happens. Uh, you, <laughs> you get the pickaxe the wrong way round, which was uh, a bit of a shame because that bar actually was pretty much bang on one ounce. So hey ho, that's life. You kind of roll with the punches and move on. Now, stamping wise, I've said so many times before, stamping is all about experience. You can be uh, naturally good at it, of course, but the most part it is just about trial and error and experience. So if you're a budding silver pourer and you're struggling with your stamping, stick with it. Uh, you know, things will get better over time. It is, li it is literally just about experience and how much you do. And I've said numerous times before that one of the best things to do is to get a piece of scrap silver uh, and test 
out your stamping. So, you know, if you have got things that you've messed up on before, like these bars, just use them as testers and then remelt them. It's really, really helpful to do that. So we've got these six bars here and we're going to be using three different chops to stamp them up. So in previous years we used um, we used individual letters and numbers and in the very first year we did that for every single part of the bar and it was something like, well let's do the maths, it was one OZT so that's four, the pickaxe five, nine including the date and then NO.00 so another six. So it was 14 stamps per bar so it was something like 2,800 chops that I had to make. Uh, over the course of production, so that was pretty huge. Took an absolute age. We then last year made this one OZT stamp, and then this year we now have a 2019 uh, stamp. And we didn't do it last year because I was kind of like, well, you know, it's a bit of a waste of money after one year, then you can't use it. But I think it's really, actually, it really works really well, and you'll see the results as we stamp them in. Here's the one ounce prototype, and I think they look the best that they have ever looked. So, we, oh by the way, these are all made by M. Shaw Engraving. Uh, I think you can just about make out the, uh, the lettering there on the stamp. They are an incredible stamp maker, proper West Yorkshire or North Yorkshire, I can't remember. If I'm insulting some of the Yorkshire people out there, I'm sorry. Uh, I think they're South Yorkshire actually, because they're based in Sheffield. Um, so yeah, they are incredible and uh, I'd highly recommend them. I'm not sponsored by them to make stamps, but if you are looking for stamps, go and get them. Uh, so today we are going to stamp up some of these bars. I'm going to do one live and then I'm going to speed up the process and do all of the rest of them off camera. This is the one you saw being poured that came in at the right weight. Um, so we'll do this one and this will end up being bar number 200 which is the raffle charity bar that we will be uh, doing later in the year. So the first thing that I always look for on these bars is to make sure that we've got one side which is good enough to have the serial number put on because sometimes you get layering of the silver and you can see on this side there's a little kind of underneath my finger there, a little divot in the silver as it's cooled. Sometimes they can be quite pronounced across the whole bar and it, it would not be very practical to stamp them. The other consideration I take is where the hallmark is going to go. So of course that's one thing to factor in but when you've got very deep ripples like on this particular bar it can be very challenging for the hallmarkers to put in their hallmark when the ripples are quite so deep and you can see there at the bottom quite thick so in that particular case I would turn it around the other way and have at the bottom there the hallmark and at the top the one OZT so uh, that's one thing that I always look for on this particular one it's an interesting one because we've got a nice little kind of um, ripple or, or sort of cooling pool there it's slightly elevated at the top here so it's going to be an interesting one to put the forum mark on so let's put it that way around now you notice I've got a piece of paper here on my anvil uh, by the way anvil eBay 20 quid who knew <laughs> it's just ridiculous this thing weighs like 19 kilos it's probably good uh, I put a piece of paper on it because there is some texturing on the steel and that will imprint onto the bar but a piece of paper stops that from happening so in case you were wondering so the first stamp that I put on these, so we are going to do it that way around, I think, yeah, because that looks, I think that's going to look the best. So the first stamp I put on is the 1OZT. And again, it's about concentration, experience, and confident, uh, confidence, sorry, for one thing. So once you've got it in the place that you want it for, you then can do your stamp. Of course, one thing that is always good is to not be interrupted by the postman. Uh, you may have heard the doorbell go in the background there. So let's start again. We'll put uh, the stamp where we want it and then we will go ahead. Now the weight of the hammer is important. If you have a nice heavy hammer it helps uh, but for certain smaller stamps you might want a lighter hammer. This is kind of an intermediary hammer. I, I don't know the exact weight of it but it works. It works very well in fact. So we are ready to go. There'll be some loud bangs so prepare yourselves with volume if needed. So this stamp I have been using now obviously for quite a long time and I'm quite experienced with it and you see there I was happy to just, you know, four stamps in a row quickly. Uh, some stamps will be a bit more tricky and we'll see the most tricky one here now uh, because they'll bounce every time that you hit them so you'll want to do kind of one uh, stamp at a time. So this is the tricky one because it's a flat face so you'll see it is completely flat on there with the pickaxe and it really does make for a pretty challenging stamp. Now one tip I learned from the master marker at the Edinburgh Assay Office is flip your bar around so you work from the top going away from you and then you can see, because if you're this way around, the stamp itself will block where the text is, where you can't see where it's going to go. So doing it this way, we can 
put it exactly where we want. Now this is going to be really tricky because it's got this sort of dome of the silver as it's cooled, so it's going to be hard. Now the way I do this is one sharp, swift strike, and that will get a good imprint in there, and then we can go into another couple of strikes in a moment. So just the one strike, and make sure it's not going to slip. See there, it slipped just before I was about to strike. So there's a bit of luck in here as well, when it's a bit awkward with the, uh, the sort of pattern of the silver. Hopefully we'll be all right. And I slipped again. This one is going to be tricky. I don't want to mess it up live on camera. Here we go. So that, you can see there, has left a bit of an imprint, but we have not got the full depth of it, which is what we want to do next. But the really good thing now is that we've got a bit of an imprint in the silver, so it's biting, and you can move the you can see there I'm moving the bar with the actual stamp because the imprint is biting in it. So now, with a little bit of care and precision and strength of holding the stamp, we can do four or five swift hits to really imprint it. And there, it is nice and deep. And you can see from the way I did that, you know, I, I didn't even give you guys a warning, so I'm sorry if I've broken your eardrums but it's all about confidence and just going in for it really quickly, strong, you know, having that, hold, you know, holding that stamp really st steady and strong is so important. So then the last stamp that we put on here right now is going to be the 2019, and that goes underneath there. Again, we're working from the top away from ourselves and we can position it where we want to. This one can be a little bit of a tricky stamp, so it bounces sometimes, so I'm just gonna do one hit. <laughs> And uh, then we are nearly there. We've just got a little bit more depth needed on the nine side. So you can then, once you've got it biting back in, you can angle it to hit the particular part of the stamp that you want. And there we have the 2019 all done. Looking pretty good. So the next thing is hole marking. And that is going to take like two or three weeks. I'm going to stamp these ones up. I think I'll do them off camera because, I mean, you guys just don't want to sit here and watch me stamp them. I've already rambled on long enough showing you how to stamp them, but um, it takes a long time. Each one is, of course, you know, individual. It has to be done properly, correctly, and we want to make sure they look as good as possible. And then, of course, the final, so we see here the prototype, the final look of the bars will be with the hallmark down at the bottom there. So that is what we're looking for. So I hope you enjoyed this video, the ride along of the pause and seen some of the process of creating these pieces. Uh, it does take a lot of time uh, and energy. And if you would like to pick up any of these bars, then they are available on my website. You can uh, reserve the specific serial numbers that you want. All of the ones which are available are over there on my website. So head on over and have a look. Best place to get the best price though is on the Silver Forum. If you go to Silver Forum, check out the thread, again, link down below you can see all of the different discounts which are available for the different levels of membership. And uh, you can obviously get in touch via the Silver Forum there and we can sort something out. Uh, I have a really good price for you guys. So if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up. If you want to get these bars, you know where to go. Otherwise, if you want to see the bars when they're all done in about three weeks time, uh, then make sure you hit the subscribe button if you've not done so already. We'll have all 200 of them laid out on the table looking nice and pretty. Otherwise, that is it for me today. Thank you one and all for watching. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.